Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all well. So this video is going to be one that was really fun for me to film and I hope that it will be enjoyable for you to watch too. As some of you may know, I was back in my parents' home for the holidays for a few weeks and I found a box with all my old drawings in it. So I thought it could be fun if I made a video showing you a selection of all these old drawings. I won't be showing you all of them because they were just tons and it would be a very long video if I included all of the drawings. But if you would like to see all the ones I won't be including in this video, as well as scans of the ones I will be including in the video, you can head over to Patreon and I'll have sketchbook scans available for my patrons over there. Before we start rifling through my past, I quickly wanted to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare, in case you're not aware, is an online learning platform. They've got tons of video classes on a really broad range of topics. I personally like their art, illustration and design videos, but they have lots of other topics too. It's a service I would have myself really enjoyed when I was working on the drawings you'll see in this video. When I was starting to explore my art, I was keen to learn and evolve, but I can really afford courses or workshops. So if you're in the mood to improve yourself in a way that fits your schedule, your skill level and is affordable, then I really recommend that you check out the link in the description below. You'll get two months of premium membership for free so that you can explore all the classes and topics and you can start your 2020 on a creative note. <laughs> and um, stay tuned if you'd like some video recommendations later in this video also. The first three drawings I'm going to show you are probably the oldest one I can actually remember and they were quite important to me because at the time I was about 10, uh, it was about 2003 I believe, and I was so happy with these drawings that I decided to show them to my art teacher in school and she had also been very very nice about them and very encouraging and it definitely I think set me off on this kind of drawing passion that I'm in now and uh, I remember them quite vividly, I remember being very happy with them and it's quite a fun memory. I do want to point out right now that I'm not entirely sure the chronology of the drawings in this video is actually accurate or makes any sense. It's very difficult for me to date these drawings. A lot of them aren't dated for one. And secondly, the ones who I dated look like they were dated later on. So I must have gone back and tried to guess when I had done those drawings and I'm not entirely sure I got it right for a lot of them. So the ones you see in this folder have a little date in the corner. Um, and I know that that date was not written when the drawing was made. It was probably assessed later on and I can't be sure that the date is correct. It's difficult to date old drawings if you don't remember them because they will all be very stylistically different from one another depending on what, I, on what I was exploring at the time and they will also technically and skill wise be very different because it will depend a lot on whether I used references or whether I used my imagination and obviously you can be very good with references but not as good with your imagination so the skill level between two drawings can be extremely different so it's it was quite hard for me to judge when I had done a drawing and uh, I'm sorry if sometimes it looks like it doesn't make sense. On the screen you'll see some information about each drawing, namely what date I think it was created during, what age I was at the time, and whether I used a reference or not, and whether it's a scan or not, because I used to do a lot of drawings for friends and classmates, and then I'd scan them to just keep a copy of them. So if you see some of them look weird with weird colours, not a lot of detail or really washed out, it's usually because I scanned them when I was a kid with my dad, old scanner, and so I lost a lot of the original drawings, texture and stuff. But um, I quite like having a copy of those drawings that I gave away, not only because it's nice to have a copy of old drawings, but just because it also reminds me of the friends I had at the time, people I lost touch with, people I might have forgotten I was friends with, stuff like that. And it's just a really sweet thing because I have a terrible, terrible memory and it's just nice to have those landmarks. I love seeing how I definitely had a fantasy tendency in my sketches, although I did have a phase where I drew famous people from magazines that I thought looked really good. So for example, I had a complete crush on this guy from a really terrible Peter Pan movie, and I redrew it uh, a few times, and I think it was the first real portrait I drew from reference, so the ones you may have seen before in this folder were most certainly drew, drawn after this particular guy's portrait, um, which is why I'm saying the chronology in these drawings is all over the place. I'm really sorry about that. But um, I really loved that drawing. I was really excited about it. And I think it set me off on a path of using a lot of reference and doing a lot of portraits from reference which I remember as a phase that helped me improve quite fast because I would just be subscribed to all these uh, music and cinema magazines and I would pick out images I really liked, not even necessarily of people I knew or liked, but just images I really enjoyed the look of and I thought I'd enjoy reproducing. And so I used to lock myself in my room and just draw, 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 draw lots of portraits from people in magazines. And I remember that drastically improving my skill level and overall drawing proficiency. 
One face that you see here that is <laughs> probably my dirty little secret. I was a massive Tokyo Hotel fan for like a year and a half maybe and I used to draw tons of portraits of them um, varying skill levels <laughs> and I tended to send them to them and obviously never got a reply back. I had never up to that point and after that point been that much a fan of anything. It was a really weird part of my life where I was actually obsessed with Tokyo Hotel for a short period of time. Those drawings again bring up memories of a time I'm quite I smile fondly at and I find it quite funny to look back on who I used to be. I also had a brief period of time I was obsessed with Pirates of the Caribbean because I thought Johnny Depp looked like my dad when my dad was young so I would draw lots of portraits of him and this one was one I was particularly proud of and my parents framed it and it was really sweet and it's just so funny to see it here because I remember distinctly being so happy for, about it and it's just quite a fun thing to look back on. 2006-2007 when I was around 15-16 is when I started clearly noticing that my surreal tendencies were starting to come in. There are definitely pieces from these old drawings that I could see myself revisiting now or even expanding on now and it's really interesting to look back and see that the surrealistic elements of my art aren't actually recent additions, it's definitely something I was exploring even quite early on in my art process. It's definitely solidified in the past two or three years, but I didn't really realise until I dug up those old drawings that it was something I had in my work for quite a long time. So I feel like I might need to break down quickly how the education system works in France because it's slightly relevant to all the stuff I produce in this video. Um, so basically between the ages of 12 to 15 you're in something called collège and in collège you learn about um, every topic so you have lessons on everything on maths, history, geography but you're learning a little bit of everything. And then between 15 and 18 you're in what's called lycée and in lycée is when you start to specialise. You still have lessons on pretty much all the topics that you need but you get to choose to do a few extra hours every week of something specific. So for me, for example, I decided to specialise in art. So it meant that I had, I don't remember exactly, but I had more hours of art, pr probably between six hours a week, I think, of art. I was hoping initially that I would be learning how to draw and how to paint and that kind of thing. It didn't turn out to be that at all. We mostly learned a bunch about art history and then we're kind of left to our own devices when it came to art projects that we would ask to do. So we didn't learn any technical stuff at all. But um, a lot of the drawings in here, basically all the drawings that I do between 2006, well 2007 to 2009 are uh, drawings I did while I was studying uh, in Lycée, so I had more hours of art, I was surrounded by loads of people in my class who were doing extra art, and so I really started drawing quite a lot and doing studies and doing life drawings from life and that kind of thing, so I evolved quite a lot during those few years. Lise is also the time I started experimenting with colour a little bit more using watercolours and a little bit of acrylics. I had a set of watercolours that was given to me by my stepmom because she's a painter and uses watercolours a lot and she's been amazing at giving me some advice and helping me evolve when I started painting. A lot of the best advice I've ever been given has been things that she's told me. I genuinely didn't learn anything technical when I was in school during my art classes even though we had six hours of art a week. I learnt nothing about how to paint or how to draw. Uh, in the beginning of the year I was really hopeful because they gave us a supply list of all the things that we should buy in order to draw and paint at school and to this day I still have the tubes of acrylic that I had at the time. A lot of them are still half full because I used them so little, we, taught, we were taught nothing about how to paint. I don't want to throw them away <laughs> because throwing away paint is one of those things that makes me really uncomfortable and I keep thinking I might have a use for them. I'm pretty sure most of them are dead at this point, if not dead at least in a pitiful state. I'm slightly scared of opening those tubes but I still have them like 10, almost probably 15 years later. Maybe I'll find a use for them someday, who knows. <laughs> I didn't find the paintings I created when I was in class. Everything that you see right here are sketches and then you, like pages from sketchbooks of the time or I sketched a lot on loose leaves of paper so it's a lot of that that you see here. I did create a bunch of paintings when I was in school but I can for the life of me find them in my room. If I do find them in the future I'll make a video with them. There weren't that many because I didn't paint tons but I definitely started learning a bit more about painting and exploring painting more around those years.
By the way guys, I don't want anyone to misunderstand my attitude in this video. I don't want you to think that if I'm putting a laughing face emoji next to a drawing or if I'm zooming in or if I'm pointing out that I was really proud of a certain drawing back when I did it, I don't want anyone to think that that's me making fun of myself for that. I am not judging myself in this video. I am not saying, oh, I was so silly for being proud of this crappy drawing. Oh, these drawings are terrible. And what was I thinking? In fact, this video is the complete opposite of that. Yes, I'm obviously better now. I would hope so, in fact. It's been almost probably um, around a decade and a half since I did these drawings. I have drawn a lot since then, and I would be very sad if I had not improved since. <laughs> So obviously I'm a lot better now. I have solved a lot of the problems I had when I was younger. I'm better at anatomy and better at perspective and better at painting and better at so many things because I stuck to it because I kept doing it. And these drawings are the embodiment of that determination and are the reason I am where I am now. They're the reason I'm at the level I am now. They're because I kept doing all these drawings and I did all the mistakes I did and I and I, I hit all the milestones I did. It's those reasons that I'm here now and that I can be proud of what I've achieved so far and that I can look forward to everything else I'll achieve in the future too because it's so important to look back at what you've achieved and it's so important to be able to be proud. It doesn't mean being full of yourself and thinking, oh, I've achieved everything I need to achieve. It, it's, it's not about not being able to notice your flaws. Of course, those drawings in this, in this video are not, uh, a lot of them are not very good. It, but that doesn't mean they're not valuable. It doesn't mean they don't have a lot of inherent value to them. They were steps towards the goal. They were me showing up and actually doing the work. They were me being determined and stubborn and excited and frustrated and angry and <laughs> and all the feelings that come with learning a new skill. Those drawings are not very good in comparison to what I can do now, but at the time when I did them, every new drawing had something that was improved in it. Every new drawing was a better drawing than a previous one. And that's just, that's that's amazing. That's important. It's important to recognize that. It's so easy to compare ourselves to other people that we admire the work of and think, oh, why am I not that good yet? It's so easy to do that and it's so easy to let it paralyze us into not doing anything. But that's why I often say, keep your drawings because that way you'll compare yourself to yourself. And if you compare yourself to your older self, you only win. <laughs> In this particular situation, at least, you only see progress and that's so important and so healthy and you need to be able to recognize your own in progress you need to be able to see how much work you still have to do too but seeing that you have managed to work through everything else you had to work through to get to the point where you are now seeing that you had the strength to do that and the determination to do that will give you more energy to keep doing it because you can always become better and that's a good thing it's not something to be scared of it's definitely something to be very very proud of and I'm so happy to see myself being proud when I was younger I'm so happy to remember those instances because it it was what gave me energy to keep going and to reach the level I'm at now and I'm, I'm not at a super high level now I definitely have tons and tons and tons of work to still do but I know I can do it because I've done everything I needed to get to where I am now and that was a lot of work already so I'm not afraid of everything else that needs to come after that to keep going in the direction I want to go. So yeah, <laughs> sorry for that rant. Um, I'd love to do a proper video about this topic because I'm, like as you can hear, probably I'm quite um, <laughs> excited about that kind of topic. But I just wanted to give you a little pep talk and just show you that I'm sharing all these drawings with you because I am proud of how far I've come. And I think I love all these drawings. They are all a part of me. They are all things that I think I should be proud of. And um, yeah, I want you to be proud of where you are right now and how far you've come from where you were a few years, a few months, a few days ago. Before we end this video, I thought I would give you a few Skillshare class recommendations as there are a few videos on the platform that are really great in my opinion for anyone looking to learn more about drawing and getting better at art in general. Hayden Orb has a few really great beginner friendly drawing classes such as his Teach Yourself to Draw Anything class. Um, another one I have found really good and have been watching myself because I want to learn more about techniques I am unfamiliar with is Painting with Coloured Pencils by Kendall Hillegas. I'm not 
not entirely sure I'm pronouncing her name right. <laughs> I've watched her for a while on YouTube. She's a fellow YouTuber. I love Kendall and her classes are really friendly and informative. So I thought I'd give her a bit of a shout out in this video too. Um, there are many good teachers and classes on this site. And if you feel like giving them a go, the promo code in the description of this video will give you two months of premium membership for free and will also help support this channel. So don't hesitate to try it out if it sounds like your thing. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little dive into my past. I personally really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really fun. I have lots more where this came from. So if you're interested in seeing more of my old art, do let me know in the comments and I can do a part two to this video. I probably even have enough for part three. <laughs> but in the meantime, if you would like to see more of these drawings, some scans, ex extra drawings, that kind of thing, you can head over to my Patreon. The link is in the description below. And um, I hope that you're all well. I hope that your 2020 so far is going reasonably well. I hope that you are personally healthy and happy and that the people around you are also. And if not, then I'm sending you all my love and take really, really good care of yourselves. And I hope things will get better very, very soon if they are not already. Sending you lots of love. Take really good care of yourselves, peeps. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye.